Good morning, my friends. Welcome back to GP Outdoors. I've been meaning to do this video for a while because I've had many people that have asked me and I just had a couple of people in the last few weeks ask again. So today I'm going to spend a little time and I'm going to show you how I operate my grapple. I'm not saying it's the right way or there isn't a better way, but I want to let you know what I think through and how I use it here on the property. For you new folks on the channel, please know that I am not a tractor expert. Today I'm just going to show you how I do things. And by all means, if you have any ideas or suggestions or advice for how it can be done better, always please feel free to leave them in the comments. When I use the grapple on the tractor, I don't use it the same way or apply it the same way every time. I actually do it slightly different depending on what I'm lifting, whether it's logs, whether I'm digging a granite boulder out of the ground, or I'm trying to grapple up a big pile of brush. So I'll try to go through some of those things and the things I think about and the way I apply the grapple, and hopefully that'll be of help to you folks that are either considering a grapple or just got a grapple and you're learning how to use it. There are a number of different grapples out there. I can't tell you which one's right for your property or your use, but what I would suggest is that you take a look at a bunch of different YouTube videos so you can see the different types of grapples and how they're being used. And I think that might give you a little bit of insight as to what might be best for you and whatever your application is on your property. So let's start out with the type of grapple I own. This is called a root rake grapple. This unit is made by HLA Attachments right here in Ontario, Canada, actually. You can tell it's a root rake because it's specifically designed and its main purpose is to actually, in fact, dig through the ground, pulling up roots and small rocks and things. That's how it's designed. You'll notice that it has the big tines that come to a very sharp point. And you'll notice that the jaw has a similar design backwards to a very sharp point. One of the things I love about this root rake is that it has those pointy tines and the tines come together when the jaws close. You'll see when I was pulling these cedar logs out, that first log I grabbed wasn't the top log. Logs were in a kind of a precarious position, so I was able to maneuver it between logs, slowly close the jaw, get to that log, and I was able to pinch the log. This one is a commercial steel built grapple. A lot of them that you'll see on the market are made of high carbon steel, I think they call it, much more lightweight, but claims to be just as strong. This grapple weighs about 450 pounds, and you might find that there are a lot of other options out there that weigh a lot less, including your Land Pride models. I think the uh, uh, Everything Attachments model I've seen a lot of, they weigh, I think, about 185 to 200 pounds less, which of course frees up some capacity on the front end loader. So you have to consider that, I think. From my own experience and from some of the other models I've seen on YouTube and on manufacturer websites, I think a really important consideration if you're purchasing a grapple is you want a grapple that the jaw opens up as much as possible. I think I've got about 32 or 34 inches of opening here, but I've seen other models that will only open to here. And of course, that's going to restrict what you're able to grab at one time, especially if you're going into a pile of brush or you're trying to grab more than one log at the same time. <laughs> At the risk of being a little hypocritical, please always ensure you've got a lot of ballast on the back of your tractor, just like when you're using the bucket or anything else on the front end of the tractor. Grapple is no different. <laughs> Not to make excuses, but the reason I have nothing on here right now is because I'm just gonna show you with these few cedar logs that I have, and they are super lightweight. I cut them to about six feet. I can actually lift one up by hand. If you plan on grappling a lot of things such as brush, um, logs, those kind of things in the forest, I'd highly recommend that you buy some expanded steel and weld it onto your grill guard. As you know, I had it on the B2601 and it's still on my to-do list to get this guy updated. If you do decide to put that expanded metal on this grill guard, please make sure you check the clearance between the front of the grill guard and your support beam of your loader arms, as well as the back. If you'll remember on the B2601, I had to weld mine to the back because even that small quarter inch would have interfered with my grapple hose connections as well as the front support beam of the loader. So you want to make sure that you check the clearance before you decide which side to weld it on. One important thing that I try to keep in the back of my mind whenever I'm using my grapple, you have one stationary component, which is the back. It's a linear piece of metal. You can curl it in and out, but the metal doesn't arc. It's flat, it's linear. It's only the front that opens and closes. And it's an important thing to keep in mind when you're going into a pile because if you're of the vision that it's like a scissors, you won't be able to grab very well. You have to keep... Let's start with logs. Logs are your easiest friend, assuming they're perpendicular to your grapple. 
Whether you're lifting a big log or a small one like this, I do the exact same thing and I go through the same steps. I always take my grapple, and you'll see this as I show you. I'm going to do one log first, and I'm going to try to grab multiple logs. I always tilt my grapple out or curl it out a little bit, and I open my jaw. Sometimes I'll put it out further. All depends on how big my load is that I'm trying to grab. If it's simple and it's small, whether it's a 20 inch log or an eight inch log, I'm gonna push my back plate into it. I'm gonna bring my arc down. I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna drive away. It's pretty simple, despite regardless of how big the log is. The bigger the log is, quite often, the little bit more I'm gonna curl it out as I'm opening my jaw, just so I can get that extra little bit of reach to get around those big ones. Second consideration, and you'll see this in the video shortly, if you're grabbing something where you need to stretch that jaw out, whether it's a brush pile, a big rock, or several logs at once, you need to push your loader into float. The grapple operates the same way as the bucket. When you put it down on the ground and then you try to curl it out, it will naturally lift the front end of your tractor and your wheels off the ground. So what you want is you want the flexibility to allow that grapple to maneuver around your pile of whatever it is. Once you get to the front of that pile or that log, Put it into float, then begin your grab. Let's try it. This time, let's see if we can grab a couple of logs. I'm going to approach my load, I'm going to put the loader into float, and then I'm going to curl my jaw out as far as I think I need to, and then I'm going to start bringing the jaw in while I'm trying to curl the load back to the loader. Once I think I've got it secure, that's when I pop it back at a float and I lift it off the ground, and then I finish the grab. Of course, whatever it is that you lift, same as when you're using the bucket, once you've got your load secured, make sure you curl it all the way in so that you've got the weight as close to the loader pins as possible. Lift her up off the ground, but only lift it as high as you need to. You want to keep your weight low. Thought I'd grab the three logs. You'll notice it takes a little more doing because you're trying to roll the logs up to fit into your grapple, but you'll notice part way through, as I started to lose one log rolling, I popped the loader out of float. You'll see that the tires probably came up off the ground a little bit as I was digging in to get that extra reach, and then I put it back into float. So I could grab it, pull it in tight, and then I brought it back up, curled it in, and I'm ready to go. One last word of advice or caution or a suggestion you're gonna find most of the time in the forest that it's very seldom that these logs are gonna be exactly perpendicular or in the exact right spot that you wanna grapple with. Remember, just like using your loader with your bucket or anything else, you always wanna to try to make sure your load is centered, especially if it's heavy, between your loader arms. And secondly, you don't wanna grab a log and try to yank it sideways with the tractor because you will literally see your loader arms twisting in front of you. In other words, if that log is in a precarious position, you don't want to try to grab it and then swing your tractor sideways and pull on it. That's why you'll see in some of my recent videos or in other videos, when I have logs that are not in the right position, you'll see that I use the tines to tease them out into the trail or into where I need to grab them. And if I can't grab it in a reasonably centered load, I'll grab what I can, move quickly to somewhere in a short distance, drop the log down, back the tractor up, recenter it on the log, and then grab it again, and then take off to the trailer. Our friend, the rocks. Big difference from logs. Logs, for lack of better words, are kind of symmetrical or linear, generally speaking. Rocks, on the other hand, are completely random. As you know, they have pockets, shapes, sizes, angles, curves. They're not linear and they're not flat to any great degree. So when you're trying to grapple them, 
it's very difficult to try to grab the rock, get it out either whether you're digging it out of the ground or you're just lifting it off the ground. You generally, I use the same principles. Sometimes I'll drop the loader into float. If it's sitting like it is here, I'll often extend my jaw first, open it, come down on the rock, and then try to pinch it. All depends on where it is, but you get the hang of it after a while. If you stick to those same simple basic principles, push the back plate of your grapple up to your object, extend your jaw, sometimes you're going to want to extend it and come down on it, and you'll do whatever it takes depending on the position or where or how you're trying to pull this rock or that piece of debris up. At the end of the day, pretty much every rock you encounter is different. You're going to adjust, you're either going to extend more or you're going to drop it more or you may put it into float. Every one of them is a different case. For example, if I was going to try to recover this one, the first thing I'd do is I'd extend my jaws a bit, I'd curl them out, I'd grip the top lip of this rock and I would pull it backwards because it'd be very difficult to try to remove this rock out of its current position. You move it around where you need to. So one last thing about rocks, a bit of advice or a suggestion. As I mentioned, rocks are oddly shaped and you've got a linear device, so to speak, that you're trying to lift with. When you're lifting your rocks, try not to apply too much down pressure on your jaw. You'll find that if you don't apply enough, quite often you start to lift and that rock will somehow tumble its way or slide out from between your jaws. However, if you apply too much pressure too many times, the rock surface is not symmetrical or flat. And what happens is you'll start to find that when you apply a lot of pressure on that cylinder, that rock might have a divot or a pore in it. Your tine is eventually going to slip and it'll bend into that pore because you're gripping it so hard. This cylinder has a lot of power. Lifting piles of brush. As you can see above me, what I normally do, especially if it's a large pile of brush, is I'm going to approach into the front of that pile. I'm going to extend my jaws out, open it as far as I can. And instead of putting it into float, I'm going to tilt the jaw all the way flat, as you see in front of you. And I'm going to push down pressure on that pile. And what that does, is it starts to compress all the branches and things together. Then I begin to curl my jaw in as I curl the unit outward. Once I've got the furthest reach I can with the tip of my jaw and I'm pulling under, that's when you'll see I'll start pulling it back in slowly towards the loader pins. If it's a really big pile, sometimes after I get it pressed down and I begin to pull, you'll see sometimes I'll put it into float just so that it'll allow some more flexibility as I'm pulling that pile back close and crimping it down. And then again, curl it back close to the loader pins, lift it up and away you go. Last little suggestion for you, if you've got a grapple that does not have a built-in stand, and maybe if you do have one that does, you're going to find that that grapple is going to be difficult to push in with your SSQA, and quite often when you push into it to try to hook, you'll actually push the grapple over onto the ground. My neighbor was kind enough that we got together, we grabbed an old pallet, threw in a couple of you know old boards I had in the shed here, and we just basically built a little cradle. So I've been using this now for over a year and a half works great. I can drop the grapple into it and I can pick it up without any trouble because it's got two sides on it here, both on an angle, like a cradle, and it just sits right into it really nice. Plus when I need to move it around the yard, it's on a pallet. I just pick it up and move it. Well, I apologize if the video was a little long today, but I hope it answered all, if not most of the questions you folks had asked me to talk about. I'm hopeful that this gives you a little bit more to compare or to think about or to be able to see as you look for your own grapple, uh, whether it's a, you know, a brush grapple, a root rake, uh, a log grapple, whatever it is you need for your property. I hope it's been helpful. If you like the channel, please click subscribe, hit the like button. And if you want to know when I'm posting videos, just click that little bell. Have a wonderful and safe week with your families. Please be kind to one another. I'll see you again on the next one. Cheers.